three Sundays from today, Christians all over the world will celebrate Easter. And according to the Britannic Encyclopedia, the earliest recorded observance of an Easter celebration comes from the second century. And Britannica goes on to report that the Council of Nicaea in the year 325 decreed that Easter should be observed on the first Sunday following the first full moon after the spring equinox, which in 2024 occurs at 11.06 p.m. on March the 19th. Thus, Easter 2024 will be celebrated on Sunday the 31st of March. Each Sunday in March as we approach the Easter Sunday, I hope to bring you a message talking about what is happening in the life of Jesus as recording in the Gospels, as he gets closer and closer to his encounter with Pilate, his crucifixion, and his resurrection from the tomb. Last Sunday, I talked about how that Jesus and his disciples were on the Jericho Road, and they were heading toward Jerusalem, and while traveling, they encountered a blind man who was sitting alone on a roadside begging, and how that the blind man's persistence got the attention of Jesus, and Jesus healed him, and how that the lesson of persistence that Jesus was given, although we know that it was for his disciples then, and for us today, Day, it might have also been a lesson to the human side of the Lord that it's going to take persistence for him to fulfill the plan of God and redeem the lost souls of all mankind with his death on a cross and with his resurrection. Now today I want to try and tell you about what is happening with Jesus that's perhaps two to three weeks before his crucifixion and resurrection. According to Luke chapter 19, Jesus and his followers have now arrived at Jericho. Notice beginning at verse number one, he entered Jericho and was passing through. There was a man named Zacchaeus who was a chief tax collector and he was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but he was not able to because of the crowd since he was a short man. So running ahead, he climbed up a sycamore tree to see Jesus, and since he was about to pass that way, when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, because today it is necessary for me to stay at your house. So he quickly came down and welcomed him joyfully. All who saw it began to complain. He's gone to stay with a sinful man. But Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, I'll give half of my possessions to the poor Lord, and if I have extorted, extorted anything from anyone, I'll pay back four times as much. Today salvation has come to this house, Jesus told him, because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save the lost. That's reading down through verse number 10. Now, what it I want you to understand is that the only air-breathing flesh and blood human being alive at that time who knew that in about three weeks Jesus would be hanging on a cross and rising from a grave was Jesus himself. Can you imagine what your state of mind would be if you knew that in about 21 days your body would be going through the most excruciating pain and agony that mortal man can inflict on another person? I don't know about you, but I have to believe that if I knew that I would be going through what Jesus went through, I would have probably been a crying, blubbering, hot mess without any ability to even think about the well-being of someone else, let alone uh, go to their house and have dinner with them. But Jesus and his disciples have arrived at Jericho, and Luke records that Jesus, amidst what must have been a large crowd pressing around him, has looked up into a sycamore tree, and he sees a man that the Bible describes as a short man named Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus. And Jesus, no doubt to the chagrin of his apostles, stops walking and speaking loud enough for Zacchaeus to hear him abrupt the noise of the crowd, Jesus tells the short man up in a sycamore tree to hurry and climb down because as Luke put it, today it is necessary 
for me to stay at your house. No doubt everyone listening to this message right now is familiar with the story of Zacchaeus. Our kids jam, sing a song about it. You've heard it, Zacchaeus was a wee little man. Wee little man was he. He climbed up into a sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. The story of Zacchaeus is a fun tale to read about. It's fun to sing about. But today, I want you to notice something that Jesus said to Zacchaeus on this day, just three weeks or so from his appointment with a cross and with a tomb. When Jesus saw Zacchaeus in that sycamore tree, he did not say to him, hey, Zacchaeus, I hear that you got some good bread and fish at your house. Do you mind if I come and eat with you today? He did not say, hey, Zacchaeus, I hear you've got some good fresh water and some clean towels at your house. Do you mind if I come and clean my feet and refresh myself at your house today? No, Jesus didn't say anything like that. What Jesus did say to Zacchaeus was, today it is necessary for me to stay at your house. Jesus told Zacchaeus that it was necessary. It was necessary for him to go to his house that day. The word necessary is a very interesting and powerful word. According to dictionary.com, when something is described as necessary, it means that it is essential. It is required. It is crucial. Jesus told Zacchaeus that going to his house that day was not just going to be a good thing to do. It wasn't just a kind gesture. It wasn't something that Jesus decided to do on the spur of the moment. The reason why going to Zacchaeus' house that day was necessary, why it was essential, why it was required, why it was a crucial thing that Jesus had to do. Today, for a few minutes, I want to talk about why it was necessary for Jesus to visit the house of the tax collector named Zacchaeus just three short weeks or so before that first Easter Sunday morning. Amen. Right where you are right now, I like to say it, say amen to the reading the word of the Lord today. Amen. Amen. God has blessed us so much with his word, and I'm so grateful to have the opportunity to read it today. Amen. Amen. Now, when you read the story of Jesus' encounter with Zacchaeus, one thing that jumps out at you is the truth that Jesus was going to associate with someone whom the religious folks of his day saw as a sinner. In fact, Jesus was willing to associate with sinners. Should not have been news or been a surprise to anyone. The religious leaders of that day had seen Jesus hanging out with people on the fringe of society, prostitutes, tax collectors, the downtrodden, and I'll tell you something, they hated Jesus for it. And Jesus proved over and over that he didn't care what they thought about his actions because he interacted again and again with sinners. And many times, Jesus would perform miracles for those who some would say that they didn't really deserve what Jesus did for them. There were many times recorded in the Gospels where Jesus would perform a miracle for, for someone and then he would tell them to don't tell anyone about it. I speculate that the reason why Jesus chose to keep some of the, as of the aspects of his God side low key was because he didn't want his plan for mankind's salvation to be completely revealed until the right time. There were times when Jesus would perform an amazing miracle and he would tell all of those who had witnessed the healing or the casting out of a demon not to tell anyone what they had seen. In Mark chapter 1, Jesus healed a man of leprosy, but he told him, see that you say nothing to anyone. In Mark chapter 5, Jesus raised Jairus' daughter from the dead, and Jesus gave Jairus and his wife strict orders that no one should know about this. In Mark chapter 7, Jesus healed a man who could not hear and a crowd who had witnessed Jesus doing the miracle, but Jesus ordered the whole crowd to tell no one. In Matthew chapter 16, after questioning the apostles about who they say that he is, Peter replied, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And then Jesus gave the disciples orders to tell no one that he was the Messiah. 
Now, my research tells me that Bible scholars are a bit mixed on the reason why Jesus did not want his true identity revealed just yet. Some say it's because that Jesus feared for his apostles' safety. Some say that it was because he was already having a hard time teaching his apostles what they needed to learn uh, because the crowds that followed Jesus were already large. And if they got bigger, then Jesus could not properly train the apostles for what they had to do after he left. Some say that announcing his true identity too early in his earthly ministry might have made it possible for Jesus' critics to find even more cause to speak against him because of the Old Testament prophecies concerning him. For whatever reason, Jesus had been trying to hide who he really was, but now, just three short weeks until his death, and until that first Easter Sunday, Jesus openly at Zacchaeus' house declared who he was and what he was and what he had come to the earth to do. In my message last week, I told you about how that Jesus healed a blind man as Jesus and his apostles were on the road to Jericho making what would be Jesus' final trip to Jerusalem before his crucifixion. And I want to remind you that Luke recorded this after the miracle, verse number 43 of Luke 18. Instantly, the blind man could see, and he began to follow him, glorifying God. Notice now, all the people, when they saw it, gave praise to God. If you study carefully the events in the life of Jesus as he approached the time of that first Easter Sunday morning, you will discover that Jesus seemed to be now willing to be open about what he was doing and who he really was. When Jesus announced that it was necessary for him to go to Zacchaeus' house, I believe it was because now being three or so weeks away from that first Easter Sunday, Jesus was revealing more and more about himself and about what was going to happen. And going to Zacchaeus' house that day, in full view of all of those who were trying to find things about Jesus to judge him for was part of the plan. Luke wrote, all who saw it began to complain. He's gone to stay with a sinful man. And Zacchaeus, after hearing what was being said about why Jesus came, spoke up and said to Jesus, Look, I'll give half of my possessions to the poor. Lord, if, you, if I have extorted anyone from anything from anyone, I'll pay it back four times as much. Now, I thought about this, and I've never heard this before, but what it seems to me like Zacchaeus is trying to do here is he's trying to give Jesus a way to justify his actions in the eyes of those who were judging him by saying that the presence of Jesus at his house had made a definite change in him. Perhaps Zacchaeus was thinking maybe that change that I'm talking about in myself would shut the mouths of those who were making accusations against the Lord. But Zacchaeus didn't realize it. But what he said was the perfect opportunity for Jesus to state the real reason why he had come to the earth. Jesus said, today salvation has come to this house, Jesus told him, because he too was a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save the lost. Jesus, because of his amazing teachings that he had done, was widely considered a rabbi, even by those who were working against him. And everyone knew that a rabbi could not forgive sins, and a rabbi could not announce salvation over a person. But notice what Jesus did. He told everyone there that because he had chosen to go to Zacchaeus' house that day, salvation had come. And to drive his point home even further, Jesus announced that the reason why he had come to this earth was not to accept Zacchaeus' confession of wrongdoing and his offering of repentance. No, the time had come to announce to everyone openly that the mission that Jesus had come to accomplish was, the, was one thing. It was to seek out the lost, and then it was to make a way for the lost to be saved. If you were here right now, I'd say, someone say amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. At Zacchaeus' house that day, Jesus declared to all who he was. He was the Son of God. 
He was Jesus, the one that the Old Testament prophets called the Son of Man. At at Zacchaeus' house that day, Jesus declared to all what he was. He was the one that they had been waiting for. He was the Messiah, the one that every single Jew had been praying for and had been looking for. And finally, at Zacchaeus' house that day, Jesus declared to all what he had come to this earth to do. He had come to seek and to save all, both Jew and Gentile, both sinners and the righteous, both good and the bad. Jesus had come to the earth so that every person everywhere could be saved. Hallelujah. Jesus had done his best to try and hide who he was for a time, but now, three short weeks or so away from his appointment with a soldier's whip and a cross and with a tomb, three short weeks or so away from the first Easter Sunday morning, it was time for Jesus to let the cat out of the bag. Jesus said, today salvation has come to this house. Jesus told him, because he too is a son of Abraham, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save the lost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Zacchaeus didn't realize it, but when he was climbing that sycamore tree that day, he was setting himself up to be forever remembered as the flawed, imperfect, some called him a sinner man, who would be asked by Jesus to open his home to the Lord so that the most wonderful truth that mankind had ever received could be announced. Jesus, just a few weeks from the time when he would sacrifice himself in Pilate's court and on an old rugged cross, Jesus, just about 18 miles away from the city that would be forever etched in history as the place where it would all happen, where the very first Easter Sunday would occur. Jesus, knowing that he was moving ever so quickly to an appointment with the cross that that has been described as excruciating and lingering and shameful, Jesus chose to visit the house of not a high priest, not a self-righteous Pharisee, not a self-righteous Sadducee, no, none of those, but Jesus, knowing that he was moving ever so quickly to an appointment with the cross, chose to announce who and what he was and what he had come to do at the home of a sinner named Zacchaeus, who needed to be saved. Hallelujah. My brother and my sister that day, When Jesus went to the house of a sinner named Zacchaeus and revealed for all to hear who he was and what he had come up to earth to do, when Jesus chose the home of a sinner, someone who desperately needed the soul-saving salvation that only Jesus has to give, when Jesus went to Zacchaeus' house that day, not only did Jesus break Jewish tradition, not only did Jesus break Jewish custom, when Jesus went to Zacchaeus' house that day, he began a divine precedent that is still in place today. And that precedent is, that example is, that sin destroying forgiveness, sin destroying mercy, sin destroying divine grace for all mankind, both Jew and Gentile, in less than three weeks will be purchased in blood, not by a four-legged lamb on a stone altar in a tabernacle, but by the sinless, pure, spotless Lamb of God on a cross at Calvary. And when Jesus went to Zacchaeus' house that day, he announced that he, Jesus, is that sinless, pure, spotless Lamb of God that will bring salvation to every man and every woman and every young person. For he, Jesus, had come to seek and to save all that are lost. Hallelujah. 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 It's been more than 2,000 years now since Jesus arose from the tomb that first Easter Sunday morning. A lot has changed in our world, and a lot more will change if the Lord delays His second coming. But regardless of what changes around us in this world, there's one thing, one thing that will never change. And that one thing is that if a man's or a woman's or a young person's soul is to be saved, then it will be because of what Jesus did on a hill called Calvary and what happened three days later at a tomb in Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Sure, 
Three Sundays from today, the calendar will click over to March 31st, 2024, and we will all celebrate another Easter Sunday. We will mourn the death of our Savior, and we will rejoice in His resurrection. But why wait for one specific date on a calendar to celebrate Easter? Why not thank God today for the things that He's done for us? Why not? Well, why, why do we need to wait for a precise date to click on a calendar? Let's celebrate today and every day because there is an empty tomb in Jerusalem. Let us every day remember his death on a cross and let us celebrate his resurrection every day because every day Jesus Christ our Lord is still seeking and he is still saving those who are lost and want to be found by him. Hallelujah. If you're listening to this message right now and you are like me, a sinner whose soul was hopelessly lost, but because of a cross and an empty tomb in Jerusalem, I was found. If that describes you, why don't you right where you are lift your hands and give praise to the King of Kings and to the Lord of Lords. Let's all worship the Lord right now. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Will you pray with me right now?